So we're back for more with Eddie Gossage at Texas. You ready for this? Sure. <laughs> yeah, no problem. There's lots of fun stories, man. Does the story get better as a cartoon, you think? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Because you can't really see my eyes. You know? <laughs> Now for dinner with racers with your hosts Ryan Eversley and Sean Heckman. Blade Holder Radio Sound. I'm a driver and I'm very angry. The sound of a driver on the radio during a So before there was Texas Motor Speedway, there was Charlotte, and you worked there for quite a time under under Humpy Wheeler. We heard from an anonymous source, you, that the pre-race kind of war room was a whole thing. Some of them were better than the show uh, that, that was actually done. You know, Humpy is, is the one who, you know, cut the path on those things, did pre-race shows that were unlike anybody had ever seen. I can remember one time Humpy called Eddie and he said, I got this idea. Man versus shark, one must die. <laughs> He's going to get this big glass <laughs> tank at the start that, finish line. Did you see line. that coming? No. Yeah, I didn't see that coming either. <laughs> before you even finished the sentence I was in. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> big glass tank at the start uh -huh. finish line. With a shark. Throw this hammerhead shark in there. Oh, hammerhead. Okay. And throw this friend of his that we've had before, a guy named Moon Huffstetler. Wait, Moon, that's not a real name. Moon, Nothing is. Moon, his. that's real. Yeah. And he's from Gaston County, North Carolina. Is Moon Huff one name? Moon is it Huffstetler. Oh, okay. Moon oh, is the first Moon name. Moon Huffstetler. Sure. And, and Moon had done a lot of different swimming feats. Uh, for instance, one uh, car show weekend, we had a big tank built and, and Moon treaded water for four straight days. You know, that kind of thing. And so, um, anyhow, he was, it was man versus shark. We're going to throw a shark in there. We're going to throw Moon in with a knife. Man versus shark, one must die. When was this? This is 90, 89, You're going to kill a live animal. Yeah. So, I said. Or human. Or human. Or human, one or the other. I'm going with a shark here. Yeah, but that's yeah. It. And or, so I, moon. I said, PETA is going to be out front protesting. Yeah. If there are no protesters, you hire some protesters because that'll get us on the news. <laughs> okay. They're um, really writing this down on a whiteboard. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. shark. Oh, protesters. Okay. Like, well, the out? beauty is you could control. You could drown out the real ones with your fake ones. Yeah. So. Yeah. So then, okay. No matter what. I got my wife and my two kids. I spent hundreds of dollars to be here to watch. <laughs> These two things started out, it's going to get bloody and ugly, mm -hmm. and it's just not very, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you brought a knife to a shark fight. You know, You're going to watch a man die. Ah, uh, you know, it's uh, it breaks me up. They're macho. Yeah. Okay, so he discounted that one. <laughs> and I said, um, I said, okay, I got my wife, kids, hundreds of dollars are spent to watch a man get eaten by a shark. What are you going to do then? And my father had worked in, uh, was a blue collar guy and worked in a packing house, meat packing plant. Okay. And uh, if you've never seen it, they've got these gloves and whatnot that are just chain mesh thing. And if the knife slips, yep. it doesn't cut them. He says, we get a whole suit of that made for Moon. So that shark really can't bite it. it and wait. I said, okay. <laughs> no, no. So <laughs> now you're telling me that I'm going to bring my wife and my kids, and if the shark doesn't kill him, he's just going to drown right yeah, in front of me. to say, man versus shark versus gravity. Wearing and, metal. Yeah. And, and then he just kind of throws everything on his desk and says, get out of my office and figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole point of the, of the exercise was... If we were thinking this is pushing the limits, 
and he was here right. yeah. is that we'd come somewhere here. Yeah. I see. He right. would pull okay. us up from our, uh-huh. you know. Right. And, uh-huh. and so it was, a, in that sense, it was a great exercise. Um, it also has been a great story for about 30 years now yeah. that I can tell people because it really happened. Yeah. And um, and I don't remember what we wound up doing because nothing come close to man versus shark, one must die. That was, Right. What well, could. Yeah. yeah. I, every, everything after that's a letdown. So we have a mutual friend named Rutledge Wood. He mentioned something about you uh, lighting your boss on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm the PR guy at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And this is 1992, and we had uh, put in lights for the first time uh, at, a, at a speedway. You know, I mean, you know, little short tracks and stuff, but this was a place where you're going to run up to 200 miles an hour, and you got to have good lights. And so... We literally worked with uh, this company out of Iowa and invented this light system. And so um, people were just fascinated by it. Whether it was talking about the motorsports community or, or the greater Charlotte area, mm-hmm. people wanted to see this thing. Because Earnhardt was saying things like, well, what if we outrun the light? <laughs> you know, and I said, <laughs> I ran into him. And I was like, hang on. Yeah, well, yeah, um, like science? Just basic <laughs> physics principles. So I ran into him and I said, Earnhardt, you know what the speed of light is? <laughs> so everybody was just fascinated. So we decided back then you could have have a practice session, you know, in the middle of the week, and and NASCAR didn't say yay or nay, didn't have anything to say about it. Yeah. So, so we did, we're going to have a practice session, let everybody see the lights. And we thought, okay, we'll open the gates. You know, some people will want to come see the lights. Yeah. That's a good promotion. 65,000 people showed up on a Tuesday <laughs> oh, night. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. Wow. And so for the media... I had this big box built with all these gauges and dials and switches on it and had Bruton there, Bruton Smith, and he's going to throw the switch to turn on the lights. And the truth is this big, thick cable just ran over and went into a drain because you turn the lights on about 30 different places around the track. (laughs) And so, you know, the crowd, they count three, two, one, and Bruton throws that switch. Now, there's TV cameras. I mean, they're, they're less than 10 feet from him. Yeah. I'm less than 10 feet from him. He throws a switch and pyro shoots out of the top of this box. And it goes up in the air and kind of flutters. And it drops and it drops and drops. No, Bruton's on fire. (laughs) I wasn't laughing. I wasn't laughing. You know, Bruton has white hair and his head was on top of his head black and his sport coat, which I'm sure was many thousands of dollars. It had burn marks all over it. And he's dancing and putting himself out. If he had a duck bill, it's now behind his head. Right. Exactly. Right. You know? And so um, it it just, it was was awful. But, you know, Bruton, every gamesman that he is, he he kept throwing switches, you know? (laughs) And I'm... I, I'm looking over at the guy that's operating the pyro, trying to get his attention to tell him no more, no yeah. more. And he's sitting there like this. Uh. So, so as soon as it's over, I go over and I put my arm around Bruton, and I don't really know Bruton. Uh, he owned the place. Yeah. I worked for the man that ran the place at the time, Humpy Wheeler. Yeah. And I've got my arm around Bruton, and I don't know him really. And I said, Mr. Smith, I'm sorry, we did it earlier today, and it worked fine. And the theme to the race was one hot night. Yeah. <laughs> and so he looks at me and goes, son, I think you're taking that one hot night thing a little too far. <laughs> and he stepped through the fence where his car was parked on the racetrack at the start and finish line and drove himself to the hospital. He had burns on his head, <laughs> stuff like that. So he so, needs medical attention, but he's like, let's keep this bit going. Yeah. And he's throwing switches. So that's just, you know, so now I'm, you know, I'd fire me. Yeah, personally. correct. I would yes. fire me. Yes. And so the next day I'm, I'm like, what do I do? And, and Humpy says, he's got a good sense of humor, you know, make a joke about it. So I sent a fire extinguisher over with something written so on it. He taunted him. He did call me the next day and he said, okay. He said, I had some friends in Hawaii call me concerned. And I said, why is that? He said, uh, they saw on the news that I was on fire last night. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden it hit me. I said, yes, sir. He said, how'd that happen? I said, well, I had this crew there, and they videotaped everything, and they cut it down, and they send it up from a uh, uh, satellite uplink in the infield to every TV station in America. <laughs> How much did that cost? And I told him. He said, and I, and I'm, I know he's sitting there going, he's spending my money <laughs> to send this to every TV station in the country. And the truth is, is I, I just 
assume the TV people know. Don't send that out. Don't put that up. Right. You don't, don't embarrass the boss. <laughs> I was the man on fire. He thought it was the most effective use of money he'd ever seen in his life because he believed, you know, you should be tacking posters up on, on telephone poles. Uh, right, right, right. And he just thought, because you know, like 600 bucks, it wasn't a lot of money. Yeah, right, right. And he thought it was just ingenious. So he is, to this day, convinced that I'm a genius. <laughs> and, For lighting him on fire. And, and, and he, you know. And now we have this. Yeah, have and <laughs> so... You know, Do you ever he, feel like you meet you met the right people to a T for you, like down to it? There's no question that Bruton uh, was meant for me. <laughs> Between guys like Spanky, Robbie Knievel, you've had a lot of guys do stunts for you that kind of went as planned. Any any favorites that didn't go as planned? Those are always your favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of two. Okay. And I'll tell you about the first one. This was at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Had this guy, and he was, he'd get on the back of an old motorcycle, and he would run wide open down pit road, standing on the seat, and he'd crash into a car parked sideways on pit road, yeah. and he would fly <laughs> off and land in a bunch of cardboard boxes. And this is part of the design. Yeah, that's how it was designed. Okay, yeah, right, and yeah. the boxes are 100 feet from the car, so he's flying through the air. and. <laughs> And it was unbelievable. And he How do you was, learn to do that? Like, what's the first time you try? You know, I didn't ask him <laughs> his resume or anything. <laughs> but you're like, sign it, it up. Let's didn't go. even ask him for his driver's license. You know, and so. It's probably best he don't. Yeah. And so he was so jacked to be in front of such a large crowd. He hit that car going so fast that he just skimmed off the top of the boxes. And he landed down in the grass <laughs> just like a rock skipping across the lake. <laughs> And I'm telling you, he crashed and crashed. But it was it was awesome. He jumped up like this, you know, <laughs> and then he then he collapsed. Yeah. Right. And so, <laughs> so he wanted to come back the next year. Well, you, you know, how are you going to top that? You're right. And so came up with this idea of a van, and the ramp would only go up half the height. Mm -hmm. So he'd run into this van, hit it, and fly into boxes. Okay. So uh, when he hits this van, this van is going to blow up. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So, I don't, see, I don't right. see what could go wrong. Right. <laughs> so the day before, he's telling me, you know what? What could we do to make this even better? What could we do to make this even better? We've got better? 24 hours. <laughs> no, we got less than that by now. And so he says, set me on fire. Okay. Fire always makes set a stunt him better. on fire. Well, I'm not going to set me on fire. <laughs> no, no, I understand. And so you, there's this, this thing that you put on their back, and it's got this gel on it, and you set it on fire. And so... So, given the signal, they set him on fire, he takes off. Goes flying down through there, and he hits the side of that van, the van blows up, biggest explosion you've ever seen in your life. And out of the explosion, here he comes, and he lands in the boxes. <laughs> What's wrong with that stunt? It's cardboard boxes. Yeah, and he's on he's fire. He's on fire. <laughs> All of a sudden, you see smoke, and you see the boxes shaking and stuff. It didn't dawn on anybody. And he's in there, and the smoke's getting... <laughs> Thicker and thicker, and <laughs> and because it's a van, these boxes are like ten foot tall, right. you know, taped together. And so the firemen are jumping, the fire extinguishers trying to shoot it in there, you know, and and finally get it cut open and get him out and get the fire put out, and he's not too badly burned. And, and but he is burned, not too badly. <laughs> okay. And copy, so copy he didn't time it exactly right, and he hit both of his shins on this bar that goes across between the handlebars, uh -huh. and busted his legs wide open. Oof. But it knocked both of his shoes off. <laughs> and his shoes flew over the fence into the grandstand and hit several people, you know? So, fortunately, his, fortunately his shoes weren't on fire. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, so, you know, so <laughs> had to stitch him up and had to, you know, get Tylenol and yeah. something to drink for the people in the stands that got hit by his shoes. Did they get to keep the shoes? I, I don't know. I think I, I'd, I let him, I'd let him keep the shoes. It's fine. Yeah. What's the second story? One of our Legends races had this stuntman, Bob Duffy, who who in his day, the 70s, yeah. was one of the top motorcycle jumpers in the world. He's still driving this van from the 70s, uh, and, and he's doing stunts. This is 2001, okay. 2002, yeah. so it's been a yeah. while now. So he comes in here, and so he uh, he's the wheelie king is one of the things he does. And sure. so he's out here doing wheelies, and he pulls me and another guy down on the racetrack and has us lay down on the ground with helmets on our heads. You know, our heads, you know, pointed towards each other and yeah. it's a Coke can 
between the two of us. He's going to come through doing a wheelie at like 70 miles an hour and crush the Coke key. Mm-mm. Well, the truth is we'd done it a couple times earlier in the day to, you know, yeah. make sure it worked okay. I lay down on the racetrack, so did the other guy. And you hear him come. Goes right through. And, Dang, he hit me. <laughs> and I get up and I take his helmet off and there's a skid mark across the top of my helmet. He told me, I'm not going to hit you. Don't worry. Right, right, right. He hit me. There's a skid mark on top of my helmet. So, flash forward an hour later in the show. Yep. And he's going to do a motorcycle jump across uh, these flaming goalposts. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So he makes the speed runs at this ramp and it's ramp through the goalpost to the ground. Yeah. He makes the signal and set the goalpost on fire and the goalposts start flaming up and you look down <laughs> to where he's at and... And, and it's kind of dark down there because you didn't have all the lights on, just right there in the center where the Legends yeah, track is. you got to make it look good. Yeah. And so he's down there kind of in the dark, but you hear, Err? <laughs> and nothing else. Sure. You're like, you're sitting here, and he's looking around the bike and stuff, and <laughs> you look over, the goalposts are about fully in flame now, and look back up, and he's still looking around the bike, sitting here, and yeah, look yeah. over, and the goalposts are really going. Yeah, you yeah. got you got to get it right. You got a window here. Yeah. So send a guy up there. You know, Big John. Big John, see what he's doing. Yeah. Big John gets the burn radios back. Said, blew the engine to his motorcycle. Oh, that's just great. <laughs> so he comes down here. You know, it's put him in the truck, bring him down here. So he comes down to the start finish line. I said, explain to the fans. So I hand him the microphone yeah. and he says, uh, sorry, I blew the engine in my motorcycle. Did anybody else ride a motorcycle <laughs> to the races tonight? And he's got his hand up, like, raise your hand. I'm like, no, 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 no. He's going he's gonna to try like, and to get, use their motorcycle yeah, I for the jump. For can, I, can I jump your bike? Yeah. I'm like, no. How no, long? No. Wait, and you and you said no. Yeah, I said no. That's... No, we're not going to. I don't want to pay for somebody's bike. Okay. All right. Um, All right. Fair, you know, fair. so uh, I, I'm like, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. So. <laughs> He said, I don't know what to tell you. And I said, I know what to tell you. You don't get paid unless you perform. Yeah. You know, so he says, I don't have enough money to get back home. I said, well, that is not my problem. Yeah. He said, so I got to do the jump to get paid. And I said, yes, sir. And he says, how fast will that truck go? Looks at Big John, says, can you can you get me up to 60? I said, yeah. He says, you got a strap? He says, yeah. He says, let's go. So he takes him back down there to the motorcycle with, with the blown engine, grabs hold of that toe strap, and tells Big John, get me to 60. <laughs> And he's towing him down through there. At no point, you're like, I'm stopping this. No. You're like, this is great. I didn't ask him to do it. This is, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> this is great. So he comes flying down through there at 60 miles an hour. At the last second, just before he hits the bottom of the ramp, you can see him trying to let go of this strap with his left hand, and he can't quite. And he goes through the air, and he flies over where the smoldering goalposts still are yeah. on the ground. And he would have made it beautifully. Yeah. When he lands, all of a sudden, yeah. and, he, and he crashes. <laughs> And so I go over there, and he he is looking at his hand because his fingers are all pointing in a different direction because he's broken his fingers on right. the, with the strap. In is he, like, on the ground? Or? He's on the ground. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I said, what happened? He, he said, when I hit, he said, my foot hit the shifter and put it in gear, and, and so the bike just, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, so the compression of the bike and stuff, it just crashed. Yeah. yeah. I said, that's pretty good. I took out the money, <laughs> and, I, and I counted it out on his chest. It's like, here's one for you. Here's one for you. So I think it was $700. I counted out $700 bills on his chest. And I said, what are you doing next summer? <laughs> last time I saw Bob Duffy. So he did a stunt. <laughs> way you promote and the way you like to operate i have to think april fools is like a prime opportunity for you and you have to realize our spring race comes right usually a few days after april fools day our pr department sent out a press release one time about how we're going to build a dome over the speedway yeah Mm. okay Okay. and jerry jones hates it when i point out that this place is so big that you can fit four and a half of his stadiums in our infield. Oh, wow. Nice. He doesn't like it when we yeah. talk about that, yeah. you know? <laughs> so the thought of building a dome over this place... Would be the ultimate. That's yeah. that's something else. And so our, our PR department sent out a press release one time about how we're going to build a dome. <laughs> and if you read the headline, if you read the final paragraph, it would have reminded you that today is April Fool's Day. Right, yeah. right. And so... Uh, at least one TV station led with that at, at noon that day. <laughs> the Texas Motor Speedway was building yeah. a dome. Right. right. And so their weatherman there, meteorologist I should say, 
uh, calls me and he goes, uh, what are you doing tonight? Nothing. Uh, Why? He goes, can you be here about 8.30? I said, sure. He says, good. We're going to pull one over on you. So they get me in the studio <laughs> and hide me in a corner. And so the guy does the weather and he's, he's throwing it to the sports guy. And he goes, yesterday, he says, you know, the thing I love about you is you've been here so long. You've got every possible contact. You know, everybody, you are the world's greatest journalist. The sports guy's trying to blow it off because he knows by now it was an April Fool's joke. Yeah. Right, right. And all the while, he doesn't realize that I'm over here in the corner of the studio and I'm walking up behind him. <laughs> and, and so I surprised him on the set and started doing the sports cast because it's just off the teleprompter. It's not like, you know. <laughs> and and there, were, yeah. there were media members that were tweeting it all over the country. And yes. so yeah. we had to quickly jump and say, oh, whoa, <laughs> read the last paragraph. Right. And so... Um, Anyway, there were some media folks that were in flames. I mean, mad as could be at us. Because they got it Because wrong. they didn't read the yeah. press release. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 That's, that's on my, them. That's my take on it. Welcome you know? to the internet. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. so they were furious. And so our PR department was, okay, that's it. No more April Fool's jokes. Oh. And it was, it, it was their April Fool's joke. I didn't, I didn't come up with that one. They did. Whatever. Okay, so it's the next April Fool's you know, coming up. Yeah. And I go to PR and I said, all right, what are we going to do this year? We're not going to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're terrified. Oh, no, we're going to do something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> going to do something. Yeah, yeah. And so they didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, so I apologized for the April Fool's joke that we were planning. <laughs> and I apologized <laughs> to uh, the country of Belize. <laughs> and... Uh, and I'm sorry. And we sent that press release out. An apology about something that never happened. Yeah. And the media was going nuts trying to figure out what we had. <laughs> so they did pick up with it. <laughs> My thing is, is you media members didn't do your job and you're mad at us, so I'm going right. to keep going. Do it to right you again. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And so Let's put this uh, out with gasoline. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Arguably one of the most uh, famous IndyCar drivers and NASCAR drivers of all time, Danica Patrick, very well known. Any stories that come to mind? Well, you know, you got to realize that year that Danica had that big breakthrough at Indianapolis, we were the next race two weeks later. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, Danica Mania was sizzling hot by the time it got, you know, the, the whole series got here and that kind of thing. But this was a year or two later, they ran Milwaukee between Indianapolis and Texas and came here. So she apparently had a problem with uh, something Dan Weldon had done during the race. And so after the race, she goes marching up to, to Weldon as drivers do, and Weldon is drinking a water bottle and he just keeps turning so she's behind him the whole time. <laughs> he won't, you know. And finally she grabs him by the sleeve and swings him around right. and that's all I needed. You know, it's, <laughs> you know. Jackpot. Rumble at the Speedway. We, we're promoting it. You know, we've got, you know, the tail of the tape, you know, and all these kind of things, all these boxing things, right. you know, right. and promoting it like crazy, like like they had some giant yeah. rumble. Right. For years or something. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> it just made it to be epic. And all she did was grab him by the sleeve and turn yeah. him around, which still, you know, you, you don't grab somebody. But she did. And, you know, I give her credit for that. She was not going to put up with whatever right. it was. Right. And so she didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> that you're using it? Yeah. yeah. She she didn't, you know, she she did it and it was over and done and and so I don't yeah, she didn't she didn't care for it. Right. right. Which just meant we got to do more. And so, <laughs> you know. Um, and so there was an autograph session. Uh-huh. We had to set up these tables and put uh, you know, everybody seated, you know, to do the autograph thing. Yeah. And so uh, they said uh, because they know me they said, you cannot see Danica and Dan Weldon side by side. Right. Okay. I know what I'll do. <laughs> so I go see Tony Kanan. And I said, Tony, you know, here's what we're doing and all this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what do you think? He says, I love it. And I said, okay, here's what I want you to do. I handed him a referee shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and he put it on and, you know, Danica's sitting there and there's an empty chair and then there's Weldon. Yeah. 
he comes marching in, takes his chair, <laughs> and she looks at him, and she just looks up at me, and she could just kill, you know. <laughs> and and so, because she knows where it came from. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Tony's just eating up. Weldon's laughing his tail off. Yeah, he sure. thinks it's hilarious, I'm but sure. she's steamed. Yeah. And I understand that, you know. And yeah. so, anyhow, um, Danica wasn't my friend for a while. <laughs> <laughs> So with uh, being the guy that looks for people that blow themselves up in boxes or jump over flaming goalposts and things like that, do you have like people contacting you regularly trying to pitch their thing that they do? Um, not so much. Okay. This is several years ago. Uh, during the NASCAR banquet in Vegas, we have a meeting of all of the track presidents in, in Bruton Smith. This is back when Bruton was involved, you know, in the day-to-day -day things. and. He's looking at balance sheet and souvenir programs are not selling well. Yeah. Come on, guys. We can do better than this. The souvenir programs, you know, look at this. These, these numbers are terrible. Heck, trained monkeys could sell them. And so I'm kind of sitting still, but I'm looking around the room, you know, with my eyes. Uh, anybody else? <laughs> no one here. You know, anybody guys. else moving? Nobody's moving. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so I count to like 30. And I pick up my pen and I write down monkeys slash souvenir <laughs> programs. <laughs> That's how ideas come to you, you know. Yeah. And, and and so then I got to go find monkeys that can sell souvenir programs. Right. Yeah. We've right. got a couple of months to train. Yeah. And um, it was a big hit and uh, went around uh, Dallas-Fort Worth. I did all the TV talk shows with me and my monkey. Right. We had a press conference with him. The media wanted to meet him. So bring him in there in the media center and I'm at the podium and he's in my arms and he does have a great attention span. So, the uh, monkey. The monkey right, no, right. no, me. Okay. Me. <laughs> so, I had these these suckers, you know, in my pocket, dum dums. Yeah. Uh, and he loved them. And so, uh, when he would get rambunctious, I'd give him a sucker. And, he'd, and like the it, trainer gave these to you? Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah and yeah. so, uh, I'd hand them to him, and he'd sit there on my shoulder with the sucker. He's happy, you know. <laughs> and uh, I'm talking, and he's starting to get a little more active and I'm answering questions and he's getting more active. He's on top of my head and on the other shoulder and climbing around my neck and on the other shoulder and back on top of my head and stuff. And and finally, uh, the more he moves, the more the photographers shoot. The more the photographers shoot, the more he moves yeah, because the yeah. flashes are going off right, and stuff. Right. And finally, I feel his, his claws from his little feet digging in my shoulder and I'm thinking, <laughs> we've answered all the questions we need to answer here. Yeah. We need to end this. Yeah. And so yeah, That's my sign. Yeah. I, I give him back to the trainer in the press conference. A couple hours later, I got a you know, brush my hair back or whatever. And one, I realized that it's stiff as a board. Monkey spit and slobber and sucker yeah. is in my hair. Right. But not only is it that, but I pulled the stick out <laughs> of my hair. From the sucker. From the sucker, yeah. yeah. He, he just stuck it in my hair and nobody said a word and just, you know, I had a little more hair then, I guess, and it was hidden, but I had a different, you know, different kind of moose in my hair. Right monkey spit moose i guess and so uh you know uh that's just where he left his the stick to his dum-dum in my hair so part of the deal man are there any animals that you refuse to work with no well, we did something with the tiger i like how you're ready to just move on from that well it didn't work too well the live tiger? Yeah. Yeah. We were shooting this commercial. Okay. Wild Asphalt Circus. And it's two in the morning and there's a lightning storm. And so that affected the tiger. Tiger. Yeah. He, he didn't like the lightning and the thunder. At two in the morning. He's also, also two in the morning. Tired. Yeah. yeah. So that means you're out here shooting with lights and. Yeah. 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 And he didn't like it too much. But um, <laughs> the one that really didn't like it was my friend, the, the, the monkey. Huh. Okay. Uh, and, and Mikey is his name. Mikey did not like it. And we were going to have Mikey uh, drive a bumper car that we had. <laughs> and Mikey was kind of losing it. Yeah. And so uh, Tony Stewart was here because he was going to be in this commercial. <laughs> and he said, let me talk to him. Talk to the monkey. Yeah. Tony Stewart. Tony says, we're, we're trying to figure out what to do. And Tony looks at me and goes, let me talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him I'm here. Okay. So look over, and Tony and the monkey are sitting in the, in the bumper car. 
in <laughs> like having like a thoughtful, provoking conversation. Uh, they're having a conversation, <laughs> like back and forth. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, <laughs> like yeah, about to say the yeah, monkey's I, like, oh, I see your yeah, point. Right. And so Tony's talking and he's laughing and he's kind of playing with the monkey. And the monkey's playing with him and and after 20 minutes, you know what they say in video production, television production, movie production, time is money. Yeah. And Tony. You want to get out of the car, let the, let the monkey drive around a little bit. I don't care if he hits something, it's okay. It's just, you know. <laughs> kind of looking forward to it. And he's like, give me time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so Tony's trying to talk to us about patience. <laughs> We're breaking through things here. We're getting yeah. through to it. So the, we never did get the monkey driving the bumper car. But Tony sat there with that monkey for like 45 minutes talking to him, trying to <laughs> saddle him down. And they were playing together and stuff. And having a good time but once Tony got out of the car the monkey went crazy so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we couldn't couldn't do but we had a there was a tiger and I remember because I remember there were two guys with guns standing right beside us uh, you for know, the tiger in case he in case he got out of here yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the commercial by the way Wild Asphalt Circus and that's just what you wanted and to call that's, this that's, that's you know um, that's and, what and this so like the visual is just to have like a circus <laughs> stuff and then like like we had a a, a, a bearded lady by the way real uh, oh, on the hood of race car, and, and then there's like a tiger roaming around turn two. Uh, no, in the garage, and, and <laughs> excuse me, uh, and the monkey driving the bumper, bumper. car. So which it's all we, the same ad. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and Tony. Okay. And Tony. Right. <laughs> all right. So tigers in cages, 2 a.m. Anything happen, or is it just? No, he just paced that? around a lot, and every once in a while we'd have to slam the door shut so that you know he'd stay there. And the not, door was open. Well, you can't shoot through the mesh. Thing, you know, you got to have the door open with so, the camera. So there's, a, so there's a cameraman, yeah, who's got no barrier between him and a very uh-huh. angry tiger at two in the morning. Name me another racetrack that's got a bearded lady and a tiger and a monkey and a bumper car and Tony Stewart and a guy breathing fire and a commercial. Us, okay. So that's the kind of thing that makes us different. And and that's, you know, does it does it sell more tickets? Probably. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Look, look, here's the thing. That's the best answer yet. <laughs> here's like, I, I don't, it doesn't matter. Well, <laughs> PI and everything like here, that. here's where I, the conclusion I've come to. I, I don't know, but I'm entertaining myself. Good to see you guys. Uh, Appreciate you very much. Before you leave, you don't have to do this. We have, I have one random oh. idea. Oh, what am I going to say? You don't have to. But if we did, if you did finger guns, and then we actually did like CGI, oh. like yeah, and then we did like CGI smoke and all that, it would just be lame at the end. Of, and I'd love that. So can you say I'm Eddie Gossage and I approve this message and look into the camera and then and then give us finger guns? You don't have to. You don't have to. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You'll see you, this before it airs. Yeah, yeah. Roll. I'm rolling. Oh, it's blinking. The oh, yeah, light's blinking. You got it. That's because there's one minute left. Okay, okay. Here we go. <laughs> I'm Eddie Gossage, and I approved this ad. <laughs> Perfect. We're on a road trip.